Hey everyone, did you know that we make a video to go with every single lesson uh, and assignment that you have? Well, today you get to watch one made by yours truly. So here we go. First, what did it mean to simplify back when we uh, were doing the last unit? Simplifying meant that we were going to combine like terms and you guys were really good at it. Today what we're going to do is learn what it means to solve an equation. So we're just going to start off that unit. In order to do that, I'm going to teach you how to translate math language into English. Now some of you have taken Spanish class and you translate your Spanish into English or you translate your English into Spanish. A few of you are taking Chinese, but this is just math language. Okay, so it's probably a little bit easier than Chinese and Spanish, but maybe not. So first, what is this thingy called? This is an equation. So those of you who said that out loud or maybe didn't, but you know, now you are like, oh yeah, I remember that. What makes it an equation? Well, it has that equal sign. What is this thing asking? Okay, and now I'm not asking for the answer I want to know what is it asking. Will you tell your neighbor right now what this is asking? Okay, oops, sorry, I went too fast. Okay, it's saying 5 plus 2 is equal to what? Now I know you know the answer. You know that the answer is 7, but the, the, what we're going to focus on today is what it's asking. 5 plus 2 is equal to what? So now we're going to throw an x in there. Uh, what is this thing asking? Well, it's asking what plus 2 is equal to 5. Okay, what number can I add to 2 and get 5? Uh, hopefully some of you are thinking what it could be. Why don't you take a moment and tell your neighbor what it is? All right, hopefully you told them that it was 3. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So you know what the answer is. So the question is, is can we just treat like an expression and just say, okay, well, I'm going to combine that 2 and that 5, and together they make 7. Well, you already talked about it a minute ago, hopefully, and you said that 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. So is this a correct statement? Nope, it's not. Okay, so we've got to figure out what are we going to do to solve this. So it all comes down to translating it. What number plus 2 equals 5? You came up with the answer. You said that the number has to be 3. So when we're doing a problem like this, because and we're starting on something very simple that I know you know the answer to, and I know you can figure out in your head, but we have to start somewhere so that you can do the more complex problems. Uh, you have to be realistic, and you know they're going to get harder. Okay, so let's figure out what we're going to do here. First, it says what number plus 2 is equal to 5. Well, what is the operation we talked about in the last chapter? And I'm just going to draw a little box out here, maybe. What is the operation happening in here? Well, hopefully you realize that it's adding. What is, and it's adding two, what is the opposite of adding two? Well, the opposite operation would be to subtract two. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Hey, what is a positive 2 minus 2? Hopefully you realize that's 0, and so it cancels out. What is 5 minus 2? Hey, it's 3. I'm left with only an x on this side, and I'm able to get that x equals 3. So that little force field or the fence keeps you from combining like terms. Let's look at the next one. Will you tell your neighbor what is this thingy asking? Okay, I'm going to, uh, would you pause the video now? Okay, so this question is saying, hey, what number minus 2 equals 5? So will you tell your neighbor, I think this is one you can also figure out in your head, tell your neighbor what number minus 2 equals 5. Pause the video now. Okay, you should have been able to think this through in your head and say, oh, well, I know that 7 minus 2 equals 5. So this is another case where you were not able to just combine like terms because a negative 2 plus 5 does not give us uh, 7. So how are we going to do this problem? Well, we're going to do the opposite. So the first thing I'm going to do is out here, I'm going to ask you, what is the operation happening right here? 
Well, it's subtracting 2. So what is the opposite of subtracting 2? It's adding 2. Okay, now we're going to look right here and we're going to ask ourselves, what is minus or negative 2 plus 2? Oh, it should be 0, so we're going to be able to cross that out. What is the only thing left on that side of the equation? An x. Now I can come to the other side of this force field or fence and say, what is 5 plus 2? Well, it is 7. So I'm able to get that x equals 7, which is what we wanted to get. Now I know a lot of you are just going to try to solve these in your head, but the purpose of today is not to solve the problem until the very end. The purpose is to ask, what is this asking? Okay, so what I want you to do is tell your neighbor what this is asking. Pause the video now. Okay, if you said what number times 4 or 4 times what number is six, negative 16, you are correct. Okay, so we've got to figure out what is that number. To do that, I want you to tell me, what is the operation? Now, we're only looking on this side because there is no operation on this side. That's just a number. Okay, so what operation is there? Well, you said it when you uh, told me what the question was asking. You said, what number times 4? So the operation that we're seeing is times 4. You can use a dot or the x. Uh, it's your choice. Okay, so now that I've got that times 4, I'm going to draw my little force field here, and I'm going to say, well, what is the opposite of timesing by 4? Oh, it's dividing by 4. Now, uh, I like to write it as a fraction line. It makes me happy. Okay, and 4 divided by 4 is 1, so I have 1y, which is what I want, is equal to negative 16 divided by 4. Hmm, that is negative 4. Now, do I need the 1? No, so my best answer is y equals negative 4. Now, I can test it because you should always check your answers and just make sure you're on the right track. 4 times negative 4. Well, that happens to be negative 16, which is what I wanted, so I did it right. Okay, this next problem, I don't want you to say what the answer is. What I want to know is what is it asking? Please tell your neighbor now. Pause the video. If you said what number times 3 or 3 times what number is 15, you would be correct. Okay, so what, are, what is the operation we're seeing? You said it was 3 times what number or what number times 3. So the operation that we're seeing is a times 3. It won't write. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to draw my little force field in here. What is the opposite of times 3? Oh, well, let's divide 3. Now, uh, I still prefer fractions. I know a lot of you like to write, you know, your division signs like that, and that is your choice. Uh, I'm going to stick with fractions because uh, I get a little confused with the other signs. Sometimes I think they're timeses and, or equals or just random things. So that's just my choice. Okay, 3 divided by 3, oops, I, need, I had an eraser there, is 1. So I have 1e is equal to 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now, hopefully, uh, you are realizing that we don't need the 1, so we have e equals 5. Let's test it, because we can check our answers. I'm going back to the original equation, and I'm substituting 5 in. We learned in the last unit how to substitute a number in. 3, then we're going to do times 5, is equal to 15. Well, what is 3 times 5? It's 15. So, does it work? Yep. It checked out. Okay, next problem. What is this question asking? Pause the video and tell your neighbor what it is asking. Hopefully you said, what number divided by negative 12 is 3? Okay, pause the video now and I want you to tell your neighbor what is the operation you see. If you said that it is divide 12, or negative 12 actually, then you would be correct. Now, I am going to draw the force field here. What I want you to do in your sloppy notes is I want you to see if you can figure out how to solve the problem. Pause the video now. Okay, what is the opposite of divide negative 12? Huh. Well, the opposite of divide negative 12 is times negative 12. Now, you can write it out here as times negative 12 and times negative 12. Some people prefer to write it 
with parentheses. So I'm going to show you both ways. You can choose. You can just do like that, negative 12 and negative 12. Does not matter to me. But you've got to think about fractions. Why is, uh, why is it working out? Negative 12 over 1 uh, times i over negative 12. Okay, if I multiply that, negative 12i over, because we go straight across, negative 12. All right, I paused this for a minute, so I hope I remember where I was, but we were multiplying fractions down here. Uh, so now negative 12 over negative 12 cancels out, and I'm left with just i. So I just wanted to show you what is happening with that fraction there. Why can we cancel that out? And that equals, well, what is 3 times a negative 12? It's negative 36. Let's test it, because we should check our answers and make sure that they work. It does not take very long to check your answer. I'm going to uh, plug it in right here. So negative 36 goes in for i divided by negative 12. I can type that in my calculator, and I'll find out that it equals 3, which is what I want it to equal, so it did work out. Okay, tell your neighbor what this one is asking. And as a side note, maybe you could figure out what the number is that would work for j also. Okay, so you should have gotten uh, that it means 3 minus what number is 0. Now if I ask you to tell me what the operation is, a lot of times kids tell me that it is subtracting 3. But if you look at that problem, is it subtracting 3? If it was j subtract 3, it would look like this, but that doesn't look like that. That is 3 subtract j. So we've got to figure out what can we do with this problem. First, tell your neighbor what you think the answer is. Pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you figured out that, yeah, 3 minus 3 would give me 0. So I know what we're looking for. We're looking for j equals 3. That is our end result. So it might help to rearrange this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, okay, if I rearrange it, this is what we did a lot in last unit when we were trying to put our answers in the best possible form. I'm going to put the j first. Okay, remember that the sign goes with it. So that is actually negative j. And then this is a positive 3, so I'm going to put plus 3 equals 0. So now that I have it rearranged, my question is, what operation do you see now? So for just a minute, let's ignore that negative right there. If it just said j plus 3, what is the operation you see? Well, I see plus 3. Okay. I, it's still plus 3. Even with that negative that I crossed out, it's still plus 3. So let's go ahead and let's put in our little force field here. What is the opposite of plus 3? Okay, it's minus 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. Well, what is 3 minus 3? You're right, it's 0, so I can cross that out. And then over here I have 0 minus 3, what is negative 3? Now, I am going to erase that negative there. I'm going to now write it down uh, what I have. I have negative j is equal to negative 3. So let's break this apart again. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to clean this up a little bit. i got equals and dashes and all kinds of stuff. So I've got negative j equals negative 3. What number is in front of the j if there is no number there? It's got a 1 there. So that is actually negative 1 times j equals negative 3. Okay, so I want you to, uh, we're going to pause the video and I want you to tell your neighbor what is that question asking. Okay, so that question is saying negative 1 times what number is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to draw another one of these down here and say, okay, in this problem right here, what is the operation that you see? Well, it's timesing by negative 1. What is the opposite of timesing by negative 1? Tell your neighbor now. Hey, you're right. It's dividing by negative 1. So let's divide both sides by negative 1. So then we have the one, negative 1's cancel. We have j equals negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3. And if you remember, 3 is what we were looking for. So I know that we got the right thing. We just had to do that one in two steps. Okay, we're going to go to level 4 now. Pause the video now and tell your neighbor 
What is this question asking? Okay, 9 times what number is 4? So what is the operation we see? It is timesing by 9. Okay, pause the video and solve the problem. All right, here we go. So we're going to uh, do the opposite of times 9, which is divide by 9. Okay, 9 divided by 9 is 1, so I'm left with 1x is equal to 4 ninths. Now, 4 divided by 9, if I type that in my calculator, I'm going to get 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, which is repeating. I don't want it. Okay, if you ever get something that takes up your whole screen and doesn't come out to like 1 or 2 decimal and stop, which uh, is something that we can't really work with, I want you to just give me the fraction. The fraction answers are actually easier because guess what? It's right here. Your answer is just 4 ninths. Okay, tell your neighbor what this question is asking. Pause the video now. All right, you should have said 1 third times what number is equal to 4. So what is the operation we see? It's timesing by one third. What is the opposite of timesing by one third? Tell your neighbor now. Good, it's divide by one third. So I'm gonna draw my little fence here. I'm gonna get rid of the dashes because it was kind of messy and I'm going to divide by one third and divide by one third. And this is immediately where people kind of check out because all of a sudden we've got a fraction and a problem. Don't check out, you can do this. Okay, your calculators do it, but uh, I'll teach you how to do fractions. Okay, you learned it in probably about fourth grade, so you're good. Okay, one third divided by one third goes away. That's the easy part. M is equal to, let's do this other side. I'm going to write it like this, four divided by one third. Back when you were in fourth grade, you learned how to divide fractions. And when you learned that, the first thing you learned is that, hey, this first number here needs to be a fraction. I've got to put it over 1. Now, when I divide by a fraction, I flip and multiply. Flip and multiply. That means I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, so 4 times 3, I go top times top, is 12. 1 times 1 is 1. And what is 12 over 1? It's just 12. Okay, so I want you to think about that. I'm timesing by the reciprocal. I'm going to show you another way that you can do this problem. Okay, we uh, looked at the fact that the operation is timesing by one-third. The opposite operation is dividing by one-third, which we know is the same as flipping multiply. It's the same as multiplying by the, the big word we're going to use is reciprocal. So I can instead just multiply this by 3 over 1. Hey look, this cancels, this cancels. So I'm left with m is equal to, if I times this by 3 over 1, remember the 1 doesn't really matter, it's basically I'm saying 4 times 3 which is 12. Always a good idea to check your answer, though, especially when you're doing some of these harder problems, and these are not hard to check. One-third times 12, is it equal to 4? One-third of 12 is actually 4. If you need to uh, type that in your calculator, you could go 1 divided by 3, and then you need to uh, times it by 12, and you will get 4. Please tell your neighbor what this question is asking. Pause the video now. Okay, so that negative may throw you off a little bit. When I see a negative sitting out front and it doesn't really have a number to go with, I always put it with the bottom and then I kind of cross it out there. So it's I'm going to change it to x divided by negative 3. So what is the question asking? It's saying what number divided by negative 3 is equal to 4? So as I said that, what was the operation? It was divided by negative 3. Okay, what is the opposite of divide by negative 3? It's times by negative 3. I'm going to use the parentheses this time because it looks a little messy out there. So times by a negative 3 on both sides. 
that cancels. I'm left with x is equal to negative 12. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Let's check it because it's always a good idea to check these. So I have negative x over uh, 3, and in place of the x, I'm going to put negative 12 is equal to 4. The first thing I notice is that I've got a negative negative. What is a negative negative? Well, that kind of goes away. So then I can just look and say, what is 12 divided by 3? Huh, that is 4, so I did it right. Our last problem is just going to be a jump start for a level 4. So uh, what I want you to do is we're going to pause the video now and you are just going to read it and see if you can figure it out. Okay, you get a job that pays you $8 an hour. You want to buy a new DVD, a DVD that costs $24. You ask yourself, what number times 8 would equal 24? So let's set that up as an equation. What number times 8? Well, I can put it like this or I can put it like this. I like the looks of it in front, so I'm going to put it in front because remember, you can times on either side. Then it says is equal to 24. How would I solve that? First, I need to know that my operation is timesing by 8. What's the opposite of times by 8? Divide by 8. So x is equal to 3. So what the question is saying is how many hours would I need to work? So my answer would be I need to work 3 hours. Okay, let's kind of make a little table and figure out if that is the right answer. Well, if I worked 0 hours, how much money would I make? Oh, zero dollars. If I worked one hour, how much money would I make? Eight dollars, because I'm making eight dollars an hour. If I work two, I would get 16. If I work three, I would be up to 24. So there is the magic number. I need to work three hours. Okay, hopefully that uh, you were able to get the help that you needed. See ya.